Hello everyone, welcome back to Space Quest 1. Okay, so we are out of the um, Arcada and yeah, um, you don't have a lot of time after you escape so you will rapidly uh, exhaust the meager amount of emergency fuel present in the uh, escape pod, which seems like it wouldn't make for a very good escape pod. I mean, it seems like, I think people who have just escaped in an escape pod might need to survive longer than a few seconds. Like they might need more than a few seconds to decide where they're gonna go, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so in the pod, um, you've got like all these screens here and it looks kind of complicated, but actually no, all you need to do is just push the, the auto nav button. There's really not a lot of, there are not a lot of controls here. So we saw last time what happens if you press don't touch, it teleports you to King's Quest 1. Power is obviously, I mean, the escape pod's already on. So there's really not much to do except push auto nav. So let's go ahead and, do, oh, I need to, okay, I need to push it faster than that. Um, that's probably against you. They really don't give you much time. It seems a little bit, a little bit excessive in my opinion. They could have given you a little bit more time to do that, but okay, whatever. Push auto nav. I mean, I guess it's, I guess it's pretty obvious. There's one button. You have one button to push. And it doesn't even, okay, the monitor flashes. You study it to see what new information is being displayed. It doesn't even really give you any obvious reaction when you push auto nav. Like in, in the VGA remake, it, uh, it actually, there's this whole cool little kind of holographic navigation system that pops up. It's not usable, like it's just it's just for show. You can't actually use it, but uh, I mean, this is not a flight simulator. It's not like one of those games where you have to actually maneuver the shuttle or anything like that. It's not an arcade sequence. Um, in Space Venture, there is actually apparently a sequence where you, you fly, like you actually fly a spaceship and you kind of control. It's almost like a third person, space flight kind of thing. Space Venture has a lot of little, it has a lot of little mini games in it, which are not really, um, you know, e even though it is basically a, an adventure game like this one, it, it has a lot of mini games, which are not typical of adventure games. But anyway, let's see what new information is being displayed, shall we? Planet profile. The planet Corona, okay. Atmosphere is breathable. Temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. That's quite hot. That's uh, in Fahrenheit, that would be like, that's over 100, that's a little over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's quite hot. Um, but, um, okay, seems like a place where we can go. The Autonav system is locked on a small planet of Corona and the pod has begun its approach. Nothing to do now, but hang on. <clears throat> a little disappointed that there's, there's no sound effect there, like they don't, they didn't give you any, any cool sort of crashing uh, sound effect. This, this game is very sparse on sound effects in general. Um, Oh well. After a skull-jarring landing, you peer through the shattered viewing port out onto the desert landscape. A feeling of utter desolation settles in. You're in a fine mess now, Roger Wilco. Yeah, see, so this is where they would show... Remember at the beginning it asked for your name? Our name, and I, I could have typed in a name, but if you don't type in anything, it just says Roger Wilco. Okay, um, let's see. Can we take a look around the... Uh, look around the pod? Look around. I said, look around. That does not seem to be in your sight now. It does not seem to be here to view. Okay, can we exit? Get out of the... You're going to leave with your seatbelt on. Oh, yeah. Let's... Uh, okay. Uh, remove seatbelt. Done. Uh, okay, now can we exit? All right, here we go. So, now can we look around? You seem to be located in an incredibly remote area. There is a thrashed escape pod here. Can we look at the pod? It seems to be semi-destroyed. Yeah, that's it's never going to fly again. Um, this is also another thing which is not obvious. Uh, hmm. You learn nothing. Um, search pod. Um, how are we supposed to find it? I'm actually, I'm actually not sure how you're, so there's something we need to get here. And remember I talked last time about how in the VGA remake, it's easy to figure out how to get the key card from somebody's dead body because you just click the hand on them and the game basically does it, does everything else for you. Um, here it's something similar, like the, in the VJ remake, you can very obviously see something sitting on the ground when you get out of the pod and it's very clear that it's something you need to pick up. But here it seems like this would be something really easy to miss. 
because it's not obvious what you need to get. And I'm trying to figure out how you, I mean, I know what it is, probably all of you know what it is, but I'm trying to figure out how to figure out what it is without, uh, I mean, I don't even have a lot of examine interior, um, look behind seat. There's nothing under, okay. There's nothing under the seat. At least it figured out that I wanted to do that. Um, gosh. Is there something on the ground? It's quite sandy down there. Um, okay, here we go. The pod seems to be semi-destroyed. A glimmering catches your eye. Upon closer inspection, you see that a piece of highly reflective glass is broken out of the pod window. Okay, that's a hint. Hold on. Would it, did it say that from here? Oh, it didn't even... Oh, you have to walk around it. Okay, well, that's just kind of... Okay, so if you stand from here and look at the pod, this is useless. You have to actually look at it from here, and then it gives you the hint that you need to get... Okay, that's fine. All right, let's get the glass. Glass now in possession. Thank you, sir. Very, uh... All right, this is a piece of highly reflective view shield glass from the escape pod. Due to its special design, there are no sharp edges. Okay, so it's safety glass, like in a in a car. Safety glass is made to break without sharp edges. All right, is there anything else we can get from the pod? It's kind of a rhetorical question. I know there's something else we can get, but... Um... Okay, I have to say, this is quite bad puzzle design, because first of all, there's no indication that you need to stand like right in front of the pod and look at it specifically from there. They should have given you some kind of hint that you have to do that, because just looking at the pod from all possible angles, it's not obvious that you'd get different messages from doing that. Um, and I am still trying to figure out, like, I'm, okay, can I just say this? You do not possess the, the designated item. I mean, there's a survival kit. Most of you probably know. I mean, I didn't want to spoil it, but yeah, I mean, <coughs> it's not much of a spoiler. Most of you know already anyway. There's there is a survival kit inside this escape pod that we need to get. And I am trying to figure out how, I mean, can I just say get kit? Done. Okay, I got the kit and I got the points for getting it, so I don't think I missed any points, but how are you supposed to know that? I mean, again, in the remake, you can see the kit sitting on the ground when you, when you, um, like it's, it's visually visible and you can click on it to take it. But here, how would you know? I, I, I literally can't even figure out how to get a clue or any indication whatsoever that there is a survival kit in this pod. That's actually, that's, that's, Either I'm missing something, or that's really bad puzzle design. How are you supposed to know? Okay. Uh-oh. Suddenly you see a large black metal sphere falling out of the sky, a Sarian spider droid. Upon touching down on the planet's surface, it sprouts legs and begins its search for you. You recall from an article in Space Piston magazine that this droid is designed to seek out organic life forms and self-destruct when contact is made. All right, let's go ahead and save here and see what happens here. the spider catches us. Okay, <laughs> that happens. You've just, blown, you've just been blown into bite-sized chunks by a Syrian spider droid. It's actually kind of an underwhelming, uh, I have to say, the sound effect when the spider catches you. Yeah, the sound design in this game is also not... I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just complaining about a lot of little things. Um, let's see. Oh, you've just become a, a vertical meal for the local welcoming committee. So, um, <clears throat> play that sound effect again. Okay, a gulping sound effect, which seems appropriate. So this is a typical sort of, um, actually it doesn't even say what this is called. That's interesting. I know from experience that that thing is called the Grell, like that's the, the name of it, that's the Grell of this planet, but uh, I also, it doesn't, give you an indication of that. So this is a typical sort of adventure game thing. If you go too far and they want to kind of 
give you a fenced in area without having to because you know obviously this is a big open area we're in a desert here and it wouldn't be practical especially in agi to draw like hundreds and hundreds of desert screens that wouldn't really be possible so what they've done is uh, the, the grill exists as a fence it's kind of like for those of you who know king's quest 5 i mean who doesn't all of you know king's quest 5 probably it's like the sea monster the sea monster forms kind of a fence around the the ocean area because it's a big open ocean and rather than letting you just sail infinitely on through the ocean this just acts as a fence so that you don't go too far this is a common sort of trope or technique or whatever in adventure games like this uh so we can't go left from there can we go up from here oh we can go a little bit up but we can't uh go up all the way okay we need to uh we need to find something Ooh. Okay. It's kind of annoying because there's no indication of uh, of even where where to go or where you should go. I know that there's a, a thing around here that we can find, but here we go. Okay, here we go. This is... You're at the west side of a cliff area. Okay, this is looking a little more promising. This is basically where we needed to go. Um, and that spider is obviously going to keep pursuing us till we... Uh, Till we figure out a way of dealing with it. Um, hmm. And actually, I guess I can go up here, can't... Yeah, the spider can't come up here. So this is actually kind of a safe area. Uh, okay, that's cool. So this is a... Uh, kind of a safe area. Sort of. I'll, I'll save again as safe. Um, I mean, it's safe in the sense that the... Um, the spider can't actually walk up here. It doesn't have the ability to walk through that little passageway there. Uh, you know what I didn't do? Um, let's take a look at our, our new inventory items. Let's take a look at uh, the glass there. Oh, I did look at that. Okay, then let's look at the um, survival kit. This is your survival kit. It contains a zine, an army knife, and a can of dehydrated water. Can we open the kit? Oh, okay. I guess it doesn't... Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, it, okay. It does give you the... Th okay, so it gives it gives you the uh, the knife and the dehydrated water. Okay, let's take a look at those as well. So, dehydrated water. This is a cylinder of dehydrated water. At the top of the cylinder is a regular regulator and a short nozzle. On the side is a label. Can we read the label? Okay, well, it says, Pelvitron's dehydrated water, H2. All you add is air. Makes 10 gallons. Um... So I'm pretty sure, in fact, I feel very sure that this does not work and would not work, but I'm not enough of a chemist to understand why. Can somebody please explain why this wouldn't work? I mean, yes, I, I, I know that water is H2O, which means it has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, but why can't you just take H2 and... Um, and I guess partly because you'd need... So there's no... Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked with this. So I'm just thinking there's no elemental oxygen really or not much elemental oxygen in our air. I mean, air mostly contains O2 um, because the oxygen that we breathe is actually O2, which means it's not just oxygen. It's two oxygen atoms together. Um, so maybe that's one of the reasons why, because you couldn't just take one oxygen atom and bind it with the H2. But even if you had, like, if you had somehow H2, can you even have H2? Is that a real thing? Like, can you bond two hydrogen atoms together and then just have that as a substance, like as a gas in a, in a canister or whatever? I don't know. Anyway, obviously that wouldn't work. Directions to use. Simply drink from nozzle. Metered amounts will be dispensed. Caution. Do not attempt to open or rupture. Misuse could result in personal injury and or flash flooding. That may be a uh, that may be a clue. Although I think ten gallons wouldn't be enough for a, for a dangerous flash flood. That seems like uh, like it wouldn't quite. Uh... Oh hey, where's the spider droid going? There's like a there is an opening in there. That's interesting. Maybe that's uh, something interesting to uh, check out. Seems like there's an opening there in the rocks. Thanks, spider droid, for uh, pointing that out to us. That might be a hint for later. I don't think the spider droid intentionally did that, but it's just kind of a funny. Uh, 
kind of a a fortuitous happenstance. Um, okay. Oh yeah, and the other thing was the uh, the knife. Let's take a look at the uh, Xenon Army knife. This is your handy dandy Xenon Army knife. Here it actually looks intact. It looks like a like a normal uh, Swiss Army knife. In the remake, it's it's kind of thrashed. Like the knife is actually kind of messed up. That spider, that's that droid is really persistent. It keeps trying to follow us, even though it can't even get up here. So what do we? Uh, oh, what's this? You're in a unique area. There is a natural land bridge here as well as life in the form of plants. Hmm. Uh-oh. The heat is causing you to develop quite a thirst. A drink of water would certainly be most pleasant. All right, well, fortunately, we have some dehydrated water with us. You place your lips to the nozzle and draw. A fluid, not a very reasonable facsimile of water, is released slowly. While tasting is slightly terrible, it quenches your thirst, at least for the time being. How can it be... If it really is just H2O, then it literally is water. How can it, how can it not be a reasonable facsimile of water if it literally is H2O? That literally is water. There's nothing else to it. Okay, anyway. Let's take a look at this rock, shall we? There is a very large rock on the natural bridge. Um, okay. This might, uh, this might come in. It lands with a pleasing thud. All right. That did not go as I had planned. Oh, oh, it needs, okay. It needs to be a little bit more up there. All right. Let's try that again. I feel like this puzzle, I'm not sure because I'm going to be referencing the VJ remake of this game a lot because I played that first. Well, I, technically I played this first. There we go. It was not known that you are a master of the rock. That was a fine effort. All right, let's go ahead and save that. Uh, bye, spider. All right, now we can... Yeah, that bridge looks like it's not gonna... Is that bridge gonna hold hold up a third time? Yeah, it holds up a third time, but I don't think it'll hold up a fourth time. Oh, actually it did. That's interesting. All right. You've traveled a long way only to die carelessly, step, carelessly stepping to your death. What a clod. Well, to be fair, that wasn't a careless step. The, the bridge collapsed under my weight. Okay, so this is kind of like the... Um, Kind of like the bridge from King's Quest 2. You can only walk across it so many times. But you can walk across it, that was four times, I think. So that's that's enough. So you can you can walk across it once to push the rock on t onto, the, uh, onto the spider. And then you can uh, go back one more time to kind of check out the, the landscape here, see what's going on here. So let's check out this, uh, this little, is this a cave here or something? What is this? Looks like there is something going on here. Am I in the wrong place? Okay, I might be in the wrong place. Let's check out what else we have here. Okay, this looks like a this looks like a place we should not go. I think we need to stick to this area. Oh, maybe this was the cave that I, that I needed to go into. Let's check this out. Yeah, there is a cave to the right. Okay, path runs away along the sheer cliff to the left. Is not accessible from here. Yeah, I'm. I'm good. Like I said, I'm going to. I'm going to be referencing the VJ remake a lot because I actually played. The, most of that first. Technically, I played this game before the VGA remake, but like I said, I never got this far in this game. Basically, as far as I got in this game was getting the um, astral body cartridge. I never figured out that you're supposed to search the people's corpses, and therefore I never actually got the key card, which means I was stuck pretty much at the beginning of the game for my entire childhood until I played the VGA remake in the early 90s, and then... I played that through, and then I went back and, and finished this game knowing what I knew then from the remake. So, so really, my, most of my first impressions from this game were actually from the remake, even though I te technically played this version first. So in the remake, um, I did actually figure out that you're supposed to push the rock onto the spider. It's, it's a little bit... 
I wouldn't say obvious, but it, it kind of becomes apparent because of the way the spider is walking around and then you sort of get the idea, oh, maybe I can take advantage of the spider's movement and push the rock at an opportune time. Also in the remake, this whole cliff area is actually, it's not just cliffs, it's actually the skeleton of a huge dinosaur-like creature. It looks really cool. I mean, this looks kind of cool as well, but this is, uh, I think the, the skeleton, uh, the dinosaur skeleton in the remake looks much cooler. Um, so let's go into that cave here, see what we've got going on here. Hmm. What have we here? Uh-oh. Orat has transformed you into a new source of recreation. You, of course, don't survive this treatment. It's tough to make friends around here. Okay, so this character is named Orat. Um... Yishimush, my name is Orat. I like you. I like death. Okay, let's try this again. So the game is getting a bit more interesting here. So I was a little bit underwhelmed by the first screens of the game. Um, the whole thing with the arcada is kind of a uh, little bit of a bad start, but uh, this is a little better in my opinion. Um, a little more imaginative, a little more detail here on the screens, a little more variety, a little bit more stuff going on. So let's see. Look at Orat. Orat is huge and ugly. Of course, your opinion may differ depending on what part of the universe you come from. It should also be, should also be mentioned that he is quite mean. Okay, so... So he's your basic um, adventure game enemy. He'll kill you as soon as he touches you, so you need to do something with him before you... Um, before you, uh, you need to do something with him before, before he touches you. So can I stab Orat? This knife wouldn't cut hot margarine, really. So go in here and try to stab him. Okay, the knife is not going to be effective. Come on. Okay, the knife is not going to be effective as a means of self-defense. What else do we have here? I don't think I can attack, attack him with a data cartridge. The gadget... The Oh, I wonder. Hold on. Since the gadget is turned on, maybe that's why we can understand Bort, because I was kind of surprised that he can talk to us. But, hold on, let's turn off the, uh, the gadget. Really? I just want to see if it makes a difference. I mean, gosh, that's kind of annoying. I just want to see if it makes a difference because um, I'm wondering if that's the reason why he can... Okay, you know what? I'm not going to go all the way back and with the gadget off. Uh, I'm not going to go all the way back to where we got the gadget and, and keep it off just to... Uh, just to um, test this. So, yeah, okay. All right. Um, what else do we have here? Um... Gonna, gonna assume I can't stab him with a piece of glass because it doesn't have any sharp edges. Key card's probably not useful as a weapon. Again, I'm trying to think of how you're supposed to figure this out. In the VJ remake, because it's point and click, um, it's easy to figure out because you can just click everything on Aura. Just click everything you have on him. And I only have like, what, seven? Yeah, I only have seven inventory items, so you can just click everything you have on him until you find something that works. But again, I'm trying to think... It actually is occurring to me, you know, there are a lot of puzzles in this game which were very easy in the remake because it's point and click. You just click everything on everything until, you know, until something works. But how would you know to do this in this version? How are you supposed to know that you're supposed to uh, throw the water... Come to your senses, Roger Wilco. I couldn't help you at this time. Okay, since we're going to lose the water, let's go ahead and, and quickly drink some water so that we so that the water timer is uh, as good as it gets. Orat, always in the mood for a snack, snatches the can out of the air with his spacious oral cavity, chews and swallows it. He notices a rumble. He notices a rumbling deep within his abdomen. Okay. Or its eyes prove to be bigger than his stomach for once. Incapable of becoming history's first living reservoir, his body succumbs to the intense internal pressure created by nearly 10 gallons of instantly re reconstituted water. As a special bonus, you've re received a much needed shower. Oh. <laughs> 
All right, and there's obviously something here on the ground that showed up. On the ground rests a gleam gleaming chunk of Orat's anatomy. Let's get the chunk. You reach down and take the Orat part in your hand. Some of it oozes to fill the space between your fingers. Aww. It's nice that they took the time to describe that part in detail, because, you know, there are a lot of messages in the game. I'm noticing there are a lot of messages in this game which are very... Um, sparse in terms of text, but it's nice that they took the, the time to really describe that part. I really needed that. Okay, so there's something going on here. It looks like some kind of archway or something. Near the base of the Topolum rests two large rocks. It is a rather bleak environment. So we can't get there from here. We'll have to go back up uh, and over the bridge where we killed the... killed, destroyed the spider droid. Yeah, okay, so I think there's not much, not much else here. These plants, can we interact with these plants? It looks a lot like spinach. Ooh, I like spinach. Can we eat the plants? Get plant. You tear off a piece of the plant. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. It is a plant you are not familiar with. You plant your teeth into the strange plant and take a large bite, only to find it tastes exquisitely bad. If you had your choice, you would choose any form of death over a meal of this. That's interesting. In the remake, there are... There's a different kind of plant that you can take. And it actually serves a purpose. I don't think... Let me go back. I don't... Oh, and let's take a look at... While well, we have it, let's take a look at the Orat part. The Orat part seems to consist of a spiny piece of bone with a small amount of somewhat less solid material clinging to one end. Okay. So it's basically a spine. It's, a, it's one of his spines with a little bit of flesh, tissue, still stuck on the side that was on his body. All right. Um... You know what? Let me get that plant. Wait, what about this plant here? Is this the same plant? Okay. I don't think we need this plant in this game. I think the plant is useful. The plant solves a puzzle in the remake. I don't think it has any purpose in this game. But I'll keep it with me and hope that I don't get killed for having taken part of it. I hope that it doesn't punish me for, for taking part of the plant, because I didn't get any points for taking it. I don't think it serves any purpose in the original in this original game. I think it serves a purpose only in the remake. Anyway, this is a typical adventure game sort of navigation puzzle. Walk along these precarious paths without falling down. Not super difficult, but uh, you do need to be a little bit careful. Oh yeah, and since I have a mouse here, I can also just walk around with the mouse. We can just click here and click there. Maybe it's easier with a mouse. I don't know. I, I get along fairly well with the keyboard. So what's with these arches here? Uh, is this... Uh, whoa! Okay. Well. Golly gosh. Okay. It's an elevator. Okay, this is obviously uh, some kind of man-made... Well, not man, maybe not human-made, but some sort of made by some kind of intelligent life. This is one end of what appears to be a large cavern. The only way to go is to the left. There's a rock nearby. Can we get the rock? Get the rock. Done. I got a rock. This is definitely a rock. All right. Good conclusion, sir. Got a rock. All right. So, let's move on. Okay. Looks like a little geyser or something. Another large chamber in the underground complex. There is a path on the back wall which is not accessible from the bottom. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Oh, dear. You've been snatched from existence by a tentacled beast lurking beneath the grate. You feel the painful sting of digestive fluids. I think you would die before you feel that. Getting getting pulled through a grate like that, I think, would kill you before you can feel the digestive fluids of that creature. Um. Okay, well, let's load the game here. I think there's a way to deal with this creature in the remake, but I think in this version you can only... Yeah, you do this. You kind of scooch along the wall there. That's how you get past that. All right. That's the solution there. There's no... You can't kill the creature or anything. You just uh, 
just do that. All right, now what's uh, what's with this geyser here? There is a geyser. There is a geyser cone here. It is rhythmically spewing hot steam. Sniff geyser. Breathe steam. Inhale steam. Buy game on steam. Okay. Um, we can't go anywhere from here. Uh, once again, hmm, once again, I, I'm kind of wondering. Again, in the remake, it would be easy to just click everything on the geyser until something happens, but how are you supposed to know you're supposed to put the rock on the geyser? And that opens that door. I'm, re I'm just realizing now, like I never really realized it before because I was never that strongly attached to this version of Space Quest 1. And I'm just realizing now, even though I have played through it before, I'm just realizing now how completely illogical some of these puzzles are. And there's no hints at all. Like I'm not getting any hints that you would need to do any of these things. So I'm trying to figure out how a person legitimately playing this game for the first time without you know, a hint book. And of course, back in the 1980s, in the time before the internet, when you can just go on to the internet and look up the answers, look up a walkthrough, how would you know how to do all this stuff? Huh. Oh. I like that. That. Turn, let me turn up the game volume just a bit. I actually really like that sound effect. That's a that's a very pleasant sound effect. Just that gentle sort of pinging sound made by the by the water dripping into that pool. That's actually very cool. I really like that. I get really fascinated by sound effects design of specific sound effects. I don't know why. Oops. I meant I meant to type drip. I type drop. Oh well, that's okay. We can we can live with drop. This is a slightly smaller chamber in the underground complex. There's a path above, which is not visible from here. There's a pool on the right side. Can we drink from the pool? You gaze intently at the purplish pool of liquid, the first real sign of moisture on the planet. The pool seems to have no bottom. The gentle dripping has a soothing effect on your frazzled nerves. Yeah, it's a really nice sound effect, actually. I get really into specific sound effects. Like, I actually appreciate really good sound design. If they're, I, I appreciate tasteful use of sound effects. Drink liquid, drink purple liquid. Okay. The game did not expect that somebody would try to drink that stuff, I guess. I mean, to be fair, if you were in a cave like this, you probably shouldn't try to drink water that's dripping through the ceiling like that, but, um, all right. Okay, not going anywhere from here. Must be a way out from here. Is it back there? Oh, it was back there. Okay. I'm going to guess that I probably shouldn't walk through that. Let's find out. I was right. You are now lying on the floor in many pieces. Guess those beams meant business, Roger Wilco. All right. Um... All right, well, next time we'll find out how to get through these beams, I guess. Uh, until then, this has been the continuing adventures of Roger Wilco in uh, what is clearly some sort of underground base on the planet of Corona. Thanks for watching, everyone. I will talk to you all next time. Until then, goodbye and fare thee well.